And it's newbie, but I agree, they have not looked hot recently, and so much of Dota nowadays is not just raw skill, it's yeah. finding a style that works and figuring out the meta. And newbie uh, have at times you know, made some pioneering moves, like introducing kind of their like their Tidehunter picks. Off lay was something a bit fresh and unique, uh, but generally I feel like this is a team that more absorbs what other teams are doing and adds like a small twist rather than like truly reinvent. There are no wings, basically. As well. No, they're not. Uh, this is also a very important grudge match for Cloud9 because uh, MSS was telling me at the after party for Manila Master that, remember, this is the team that knocked them out in, from the tournament. It, I believe Cloud9 finished, or rather MP finished number three. And MSS was, you know, feeling very, rather sad. He, he he told me that, like, this was a tournament that they felt like they could have won uh, at Manila Masters. And um, I think they, they took to game three. Newbie was able to edge them out. And this is, I think, uh, Cloud9's time to draw blood back on the other direction. We have... Lumi, the Lich meta it's continuing, continues. It, it is expanding, you know, in all directions. I know you mentioned earlier today, Cloud9 first pick Lich. We saw two first pick Liches in our last series, Execration, uh, taking on LGD FY. Uh, and this series, we see it again. This time it's Newbie taking it first, Cloud9 going for the Sand King. And interestingly, probably the biggest curveball is this Zeus, which they grabbed very early. So two heroes that do not match up particularly well against the Nyx. Yeah, I'm curious what, what position this Zeus is going to be. We do see teams like LFY has employed the Inflamed Zeus on the third position. Of course, Zeus traditionally is a two-position hero. But we also have seen Aoi play as a four in the past, uh, kind of playing as a greedy support. You kind of scale into a, a semi-core by the end of the game, a great dewarder as things go for a support hero. Um, I I personally love offlane Zeus uh, if the lineup suits him, right. because the hero benefits a lot from levels. I, I, I but don't here's think the thing, he though. needs to farm. Are you going to get level against Zeus, or against a Lich? Yeah, pr uh, against the Lich, you most likely want to dodge that matchup. So you know, the thing is, like, they may just send the Lich wherever the Zeus is. We'll see what the overall composition is for Cloud9. And if it is a support Zeus, then it doesn't really matter too much. So that is the nice thing. I, I think it is a slightly flexible hero, but yep. I personally, if the most successful Zeuses I've seen uh, in this patch have generally been the other. I, I'm kind of leaning towards more of support. Lich is, like you said, a... Uh, Kind of an awkward thing to force in your lane. Also, playing Zeus against Nyx Assassin is just one of the most brutal things. You, you come into the lane, you try to zap some kids, and then you get stunned and you just get killed. So, yeah, these two picks makes me Accurate think that summary. it's summary. Yeah, <laughs> makes me think that Zeus is going to be more of a support, but we'll see. We'll see. We, we've seen the thought of Zeus occasionally, like not so much lately. Yeah, uh, uh, a bygone age, I guess. You, uh, uh, how Overall thoughts, I mean, the draft has not really revealed itself too much. What type of style do you expect out of these teams? Like, when I've seen Newbie, they generally do favor their more mid-game style lineups, mm. or sometimes even having a hard carry, but it's very rare oh, to see them, nice. like, try to, to rely on the laning stage. Uh, they often like to pick that big team fight hero for KP, Tidehunter's uh, Newbie specialty, and play around that a lot. That's kind of my handle on Newbie. Uh, as for Cloud9, they've been all over the place. The They've been all over the place, but one common theme that ties it all together, they are one of the most economically based team. Um, they generally average one Midas per game, which is, I think, a little bit higher compared to all the other teams. Is that a confirmed stat? I went one back Midas and looked really? at the last 10 to 15 replays. That is crazy. Um, and they also generally like to pick up one support that has a GPM talent by 10 or 15. Like, Eternal Envy likes to farm. He likes his team to be rich. Greed um, is good. And, and Gordon Gecko would be proud. That's why their games do tend to go long uh, for one reason or another. But uh, generally, they do win the games when they do go long. Um, the other thing I do want to point out about this draft so far is that Newbie has been putting Sanking on, on Kaka for like the last, I don't know, 10 billion games, it feels like. And the <laughs> fact that Cloud9 was able to pick up one of the heroes that teams always give to Newbie and have it on for themselves is actually a very key counter pick. So I think that so far the draft is, to me, edging out uh, for Cloud9 a little bit, but we still got a lot left of the draft. Yeah, I've often felt that way too. Like, I, I just see that Lich pick. But the Liches, <laughs> the Liches yeah, have been yeah. really powerful lately. So no matter how the lineups look on paper in the mid game, we do have to always keep in mind just how much the lanes can be thrown in for a loop by this Lich. Newbie's still not really showing their overall strategy here. 
these picks. We just know they have a, a very annoying potential offlaner or support hero for the Nyx. Uh, and then you have strong lanes. From, but strategy, bigger game plan, still very much unclear. Cloud9 starting to emerge. You know, they've got tons of nuke damage at this point through these first three picks. Veil vale is a value item for them. Obviously, they don't have a building hitter. They don't really have a uh, big pushing or late game here yet, but you have to imagine be grabbing something like that for them. Jackie Mao has been playing a lot of Juggernauts for the first two games. Uh, was paired with Lich, I believe, both games. And... Terrorblade obviously is an Envy special. I also sure. think, like, you know, taking the Zeus is maybe in part uh, protecting a potential TB pick. Zeus is probably yep. the single best. Another one of his uh, very common pick is the uh, Bristleback. Maybe that's the reason why we are seeing so many Lich. Like, he's just kind of good against some of the more common picks nowadays. Bristleback in particular, a lot of his damage output will be limited by the Frost armor. Ten seconds. Yep. Snagged up by Nui. This has also been a very popular pick. Obviously, Five seconds. Frosty prize on top of Chronosphere. Got things covered there. Team fight is certainly secure for Newbie. Uh, Cloud9, obviously, great own right. Uh, but still, the laning setup is open for discussion here. Is this a void? Is it an awful mix? Uh, is it a safe lane void? We've certainly seen a fair amount of that. Uh, it's, it's still, to me, unclear how they want to set this up. Uh, and most importantly, perhaps, life is the lane. So many lives to ruin, <laughs> but only one lane to go to at a time. Many people will be put into uh, what's a uh, the, the bottomless pit? Is that the, the how the lore goes? The, put them in yeah, his coffin. Yeah, the, the bottomless pit. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that is for sure is that a lot of the teams coming out from China, your your LGDs, your Alphys, they love the pairing of Faces Void plus Ancient Apparition. We've seen that earlier today by Alphys, uh, but Faces Void plus the the Lich ultimate is also a very potent combo. We are going to see Nice Stalker coming up from Cloud9. So it is. Well, actually, yeah. So support. Support Night Stalker. Support. It's a five position Zeus. Yeah, I guess it could be. Okay, so I think it's Fada Puck. Oh, man. Here we go. Ah, the Shamble of Bones. Yep. This is the undead strand. <laughs> Fogged is here. Lich is here. Just need a White Walker to round this thing out. But, um. Yeah, uh, so it looks like probably a Fada Puck, support Zeus Night Stalker, and then... But I, I mean, again, I'm just... Yeah, I'm spitballing here, Luby. They could certainly put, you know, other heroes in the offlane. Other... A lot of flex picks for Cloud9. So right before this game, I was checking on some of the hero statistics, and Night Stalker coming into this tournament is one of the highest picked uh, heroes. You pick him kind of first phase always, or first phase ban, rather. And he's currently like one in five or one in four in this tournament. So that to me reflect how teams are kind of evaluating this hero and moving forward, maybe this hero, you're not going to first phase him anymore. Cloud9 definitely is kind of delaying their picks. Yeah, I love the I love the Pugna as far as shoring up a lot of newbies issues this game. They do not have much push. The Pugna helps with that. The ward is amazing against many of these heroes. However, is squishy and cloud nine have a lot of good heroes at jumping him lots of good burst damage from the zeus good initiation from all three of the other supporting cast so like on paper the pugna feels like it could either be amazing or a complete feeding train wreck and i'm curious to see i think pugna is a hero true. pugna as a hero always feels like that right like yeah. he, he could have the superman game that we just cast as super one like 13 and 2 by the end of the game, or you could just be like 0 and 7 by 10 minutes because he is so so squishy. So the laning will be a, a telling tale of how how the game will go. All right, so <laughs> make the final selection. It there is the bristle boss. So now you've got the pugna sinny green goodness that keeps him healthy. And by the way, how the hell is pug? He's got them horns, dude. I guess it's the pop collars. I think they're like supposed to be in like a V formation here, like Bristleback's actually behind. Uh, okay, but I'm not, okay. I'm not sure. We're, yeah, well, I'm not but sure even either. so, I mean, the guy's like two feet tall. Surely he's not bigger than a giant porcupine mutant. Is, is Puck consider also very tall, or is he just cheating? <laughs> he's definitely floating. <laughs> sure. 
Final pick here for Cloud9. Oh, we are going to be in for a long one. Oh, boy. But here's the thing. Pugna is well equipped dealing with Naga Illusions. You get the Ags on him. He is... He's got no problem. So the real out. question is, did Newbie grab some caffeine before this match? They might need it. <laughs> of course, uh, I, I feel like Newbie could potentially be well prepared to deal with this type of strategy, Lumi, because they've got heavy push here. Bristleback, a great frontline sieger. Pugna, good at bringing those towers down quickly. Mm. Uh, and then a supporting cast that can hopefully find those pickoffs and set up for the push. Uh, you also have Frost Armor, so if it comes to like trying to split push or trade for Cloud9, that's going to be tough going, especially with the reduced damage that elude nowadays. They are good at grouping up and kind of pushing into your base, but are they good at dealing with illusions cutting in the wave in the back? Pugna with an eggs. Yeah. But then you Pugna also... Pugna with the BOTs and eggs. Pugna kind with of... eggs, BOT, and like a blink or something. So you can really get around fast. I mean, Kaka, in theory, should be able to find Envy and then pop his spike here, piss, get off a stun and, and set off an initiation on him. But MV has played against this particular catch uh, for a long time. So don't be surprised if he turns off his Radiance from time to time to maneuver around the map and, and not get caught by a Spike Carapace gank. Man, so I thought it was going to be an SCCC Pugna. Now they're all swamping around. So newbie trying to hide their cards <laughs> as long as possible. But here we go. Cloud9 certainly looking for a win. They had a, a tough opponent to start the day off with OG. Overall thoughts, Loom? Me on that. Uh, I guess first of all, you know, how how do you see like the timings and the kind of the game plans for these teams, big picture, and then, you know, perhaps more importantly, uh, who do you think has the edge? I think LF or sorry, not LF, newbie definitely has the edge. They have, to me, a more kind of concrete game plan. Just do well in the lane and then just push. Uh, put a lot of pressure. And I feel like this Cloud9 lineup takes a long time to come online. It is a Naga lineup to begin with, and also. You have a five position zoo support that doesn't offer much of anything. It's not great at laning, it's not great for the early skirmish and fights. Um, the Sand King to me is going to have to do a lot for Aoi. We'll see if he's able to do so. Well, it's Greed with a capital EE -E to get this game hey. one started. Newbie, meanwhile, looking for a bit of a more stable lineup. They are going to ultimately choose to have SCCC take the bristle back, and it's going mid. At least for now, be showing himself up towards the top lane. Seeing lane adjustments here. We were seeing a lot of the bristle mid. The safe hug, though, that's something we haven't really seen in a long time. I think TI4 era, the safe lane Pugna was very popular, actually, because you could pull, uh, get the double wave with the catapult, and then push your safe lane tower super hard. But I can't recall having seen a whole lot of it. since. You know, T TI4 era, anything that could push is a very popular pick. Yes, <laughs> that's by, by the end of the tournament, yeah. that's true. Well, this is one of the advantage of having a safe lane, uh, or rather a support Zeus, because he could just start walking around bolting. And he does find one of the wards on the bottom. He will tangle it immediately. And Not going to be a five position for long. Yeah. He, he knows that this is also blocked, so he's going to just bolt it. Highlight die. Save that money on... Pops off are a you, very you, early clarity. Are you, are you trying to put ideas in? We are actually mind linked. So mind linked. He's already got the idea. Well, better better be mind linked to Pi, I think, than it. Might go a little crazy if I sign this or battle. He does have a clarity going. I'm not sure exactly for what, but he is uh, bolt away. All right, so. Let's see how these lanes are shaking out. They are initially putting the Lich bottom. I know that's something we were curious about. Faith getting aggressive here. So it is the Void Lich dual lane up against a an unconventional uh, Zeus Naga mid lane. It's going to be a Puck first Bristle. And then in the off lane, the double melee cluster of MSS and Aoi matching up against the safe lane Pugna. Do you favor either laning setup here? Any adjustments you would want to see? To me, I think the Sand King is very stranded. What lane is he actually going to have an impact? He can't really zone out Kaka. He can't really roll mid and set off ganks. So to me, he's just leeching the experience uh, at the top lane. Maybe once the first Nightfall comes, MSS roams off the lane and he could get a little bit of experience. But Sand King to me is the MVP early on for Cloud9 because he needs to actually kind of tie the early game together for Cloud9 and I don't think he's able to do so given the lane matchups. We're giving out MVP awards already. <laughs> Rather, he's the most important player for the team. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the jungle, two oh, support. Man fight! Man fight! Faith takes it. 
One person into the bottom. Let's get in the coffin. There you go. Actually, this set, does that is that a coffin? That's more of like a tarp. Switch doesn't like getting wet, I guess. <laughs> Nicely done there, and really unfortunate when, as you mentioned, you are a hard support Zeus. Things looking good early for Newbie in the off lane. Bristleback middle, lane as well in the mid lane, and that is going to change as Owie drives by, finds the kill with the haste turn. Proving me wrong immediately. I was thinking that he can't actually force a kill mid, but it looks like Fado was able to do a very good job at kind of driving him low enough to make that burrow strike with a haste turn for a kill. KP playing pretty aggressively here on Envy, who is struggling in the farm department as you'd expect against the Lich. Yes, thus far, and when you know when you've got a lineup that's quite greedy, Lumi. Like often, you you want the Naga to have that good start, so she gets you know the early radiance, and then she kind of creates space for the rest of the team to farm by pushing the lanes out. But the more the longer it takes Envy to come online, the longer you know his comrades are really going to suffer here and struggle to find their own. Yeah. Also, it's not just about the last hits. Uh, Naga's level is actually quite critical as well. Getting to level 12 to have more access to the Song of the Siren to escape gangs and, and stuff like that is very key as well. He's supposed to be the quote-unquote counter to KP's Chronosphere, right? So him getting the uh, more usage out of his Song is absolutely critical for them winning this game. Despite the death, S triple C. Ta Still doing all right in the mid lane. And Kaka is getting a bit pressured. But in good news for Newbie, Mugi is doing just fine. This is the nice thing about the Nyx. He's a good damage sponge and frontliner for that. Very, very squishy. Flip something on the mid lane. Triple C, but he's got the two points of Bristleback now. He'll be pretty tanky. It's bottom lane where Envy takes a bit of a hit. Faith just constantly canceling these clarities with Pylai dying. I think he's able to like three or four of them at this point. Very mana depend, starved even, until Envy is able to, I don't know, at least get the Aquila. He's really gonna topped off. As the lanes kind of settle in like this, I'm just wondering how Cloud9 could actually, you know, stay on even footing. Bottom lane, Envy's having a tough time. He's actually racing towards a rune here. Fave is gonna deny it, and now Envy. Caught in a very awkward spot. SC's coming in. He doesn't have Nasal Goo just yet, but the body blocks are coming out. Pilai Dai trying to rescue Look at his friend. This Lich just <laughs> man moding into two heroes, trying to body block for his bristle back. Lich is a new and revitalized force in the modern game of Dota. How often do you see that? Old Lich is like you're running for your life, you're feeding, you're scared. This Lich has no fear. While top lane action breaking out as Owie gets caught almost under tower. TP canceled. My time now, so MSS starting to make his roaming movements. I imagine they might just give this lane to Owie, let MSS try and pressure elsewhere, but Newbie, who do you gank? Newbie knows that he's out of mana, so they're not really even afraid. He does have a mango, but... It's almost shrine time if he wants to. Pretty big investment. The only one that he only really needs to muscle. Well, Fata is going to prep up the mid gank, I suppose, by driving SC's HP relatively low. And they do have a smoke, so they're likely going to pop it and, and go straight mid. Roaming through the river, hoping to find somebody on their lonesome. Might want to scout this ancient camp as well, see if there's any stacks for the bristle, and they'll find there's nothing. Puck at six. Now looking to descend on the mid lane where Faith has set up shop. They do have Frost Armor on S Triple C, but if Ooh. HP's low enough that maybe they can nuke him down, keep in mind though he does have raindrops. Newbie already knows. They pop down low ground, and this ward has scouted out the entire rotation. And nobody's showing top either. Yeah. It's already being called. So Mugi now can more aggressively push this tower. Precious nighttime being wasted. It is buying a little space for Envy, I suppose, over bottom as he looks to catch up, but still KP outstripping him in the CS department, and they start to descend. Moving on to S Triple C, fades out in front. Night Stalker flapping over the trees, tries to lock down onto that Lich. Will he get to the shrine? No, the coil's committed. Huge drop from Cloud9 just to take down a low, lowly Lich, and now revenge is what S Triple C is after. Chasing yes. forward with the quills, chews him up, spits him out, takes out the Sand King. Pretty awful trade for Cloud9 when you also consider time investment and the coil drop. For sure. Um, again, Newbie knew the gank was coming. Double Frost Armor up on all the heroes. They're so tanky. And SC now has an invis, takes the, the bounty rune, and he's looking to set up a gank perhaps on Envy. Envy's only level four. Man, the Lich effect is strong. 
Faith is the same level. KP well on his way to six, and they might just make a move here on Envy. S Triple C's got the invis. Envy has the TP. Goes for it now. But bash. Up saying, give me a bash. Give me a bash. No, KP. Your prayers are not answered. Meanwhile, top lane Mookie almost got picked off. Did barely TP out in the nick of time. By the way, while all that was happening, the Pugna effect was quietly creeping in as this top tier one down to less than two health, it looks like. So heavy structural damage done. And once that tower falls, the way to rotate towards mid and really assume Roshan control lies open for newbie. So these early towers are being pressured. And I think Lumi, you know, what we were touching on earlier, that is the really the fulcrum of the newbie game plan. They have to take early towers, establish map control, and limit Cloud9 space to farm. And so far, it feels like they're on track to doing it. Yeah. One of the ways that Cloud9 can make an eventual comeback, and I'm talking about like 25, 35 minutes into the game, is the Roshan Pit. When you have the Naga Siren as a hero, you can just pretty much stop any Roshan that's happening on the other side, or just do it yourself with the Song Siren backup. And uh, I, I think that's... I mean, Cloud9 always love to sneak Roshan and stuff like that. Gonna forfeit this tower bottom. So one down, two to go. And one of those quite low, as mentioned. With the Chronosphere ready, might just see Newbie make a move soon. It's also daytime now. This feels like the most opportune possible moment to try and make a play. There they go. Chain Frost isn't ready yet. I guess that's the one big thing they're missing here. But they bring three to mid and begin to group up. Lugido though, already pressuring the bottom tower. Level 7, obviously working towards that Aether Lens. Pretty standard build. I think he's just going to come mid. It looks like they're going to four-man tower. And I mean, really, can Cloud9 do much about it? There's no Blink on Puck yet. There's no Song of the Siren setup available. Feels like just another free tower for Newbie. They do see Kaka, and they have all their abilities, but who cares if you kill a Nyx Assassin at this point, right? You're not going to stop the push. Kaka also dropped a ward, so he might catch somebody Moving in, Vale is ready for Fauna. Big pickup for Cloud9. Can they make something happening? Try, they commit the darkness. They look for the flank. It's MSS from the rear, but newbie. They retreat a squad of four. They leave the bristle top. So again, the pressure on structures. It's consistent that newbie have either you know one of their cores just hitting a tower, the other four working together elsewhere on the map, and. Cloud9 really can't stop this. Maybe MSS can at least hit some creeps in the meanwhile, get experience, but it's not going to keep the bristle off the tower. Last hit, two down, one to go. It's the tier ones crumble. I mean, this tower is already dead, right? They will have a glyph available. Chronosphere on the back line here, and they're going to try to burn down Pylai Die. He is a freebie. Coil is going to get used. Kaka might be a little bit of trouble, but I think they are going to lose a Sanki as well. Oh, he's going to get stunned up here. They will burst him down. Two for one trade. MSS needs to get out there right now. That was without S Triple C. Now he joins the fray. Fada slightly missing on the orb, not able to bring down the Lich, who continues to stay alive. Now MSS on the run. Pilai Dai gets the finish. S Triple C diving deeper and deeper. He really Ooh. wants MSS. Does he's he dare fine. breach high ground for it? No, he's going to back down the critical hour elsewhere. Envy coming in for behind, wants to deal with KP. Tries to slow him down, nukes him decently, but there's the time walk back to safety. He's going to grab this regenerator and will be. Almost instantly canceled, but he does end up getting away. So in the end, not too bad for Cloud9. They hold the tower and they don't completely fumble the team fight. It looked like they were gonna lose like maybe two more heroes there, but managed to scrape it out. You know, I found it very surprising that Newbie decided to start off the team fight with Chronosphere, because all they had to do is just sit behind the Pugna and blast off that tier one tower with Pugna. But instead they choose to take a fight, it was chaotic, and as a result, not only did they not win the fight clearly, they also didn't get the tower. And, and if you want to... Oh, nice Carapace in the top lane setting up here on AUI 2000. Nice. Oh, just the second. I, I didn't see if it was the Caustic or the Sandstorm, but yeah, one he, of them proc. He just instantly Carapace. He it. spiked the Caustic off a creep kill. That was yeah. nicely timed. So, yeah, I mean, that's a great point that you're making about the way they approach that push. Uh, also, if you want to take that fight and dive, you really should have the Bristle there. Like, he's the dream hero in that type of prolonged engagement. Right. Uh, I do want to point out items, Lumi. S Triple C is going straight for a pipe. This is an amazing pipe game. Yeah, he's got a hood already. KP, interestingly, has also got a hood. How many times do you see Faces Boy first item hood? But pipe is so good. Like, yeah? what physical damage does Cloud9 have? Naga is a magic damage carry. Puck has no drow or anything to really boost up his right click. So. This is an Unless entirely Night magic. Unless getting an armlet yeah. and going carry, which doesn't seem like. Pipe is the end. 
All right, Kaka is going to get caught out. Puck coming in here as well. And this should be a kill. Nice picks. And what do you know? Perfect timing to hit the Shrine as well. So is an opportunity now for Cloud9 to try and make their second round of moves. But you know, whenever it's daytime and once these pipes are complete, Newbie is going to group up and start going for those bigger objectives, the Tier 2s, yep. maybe the Roshan. Meanwhile, Envy, only 1,200 gold. I mean, sometimes you'll see Naga's like two-thirds or more of the way to their Relic or even having it in a really good game at this point. He still has a lot of catch-up. Puck was able to steal a couple of the treats from Messi, but not going to slow him down too much. The, the one, I guess, silver lining here for Cloud9 fans, hold that thought here, is Lich going to get run down. It's the fact that even though Newbie is good at pushing, they're not good at pushing fast, right? Like, the, the Pugna Blast take a while to actually wear down a tower. And every bit of time for a Naga lineup is super, super important. Let me ask you something, uh, speaking of the, the Pugna and the pushing. Like, we saw a very different build from Super. Yes. Uh, in last game, you went BOT rush. Uh, do you like the Aether Lens and the Ags better? Or what, what are your thoughts on, like, the right way to add much Pugna? Um, Aether Lens always to start off. Like, that's, that's always the, the, the right item. I think I like the BOT because they are allowed to push back so many waves. Uh, and you know that Naga is going to be splitting you, but at the same time, having Axe available is also good dealing with Naga. I, I think the order doesn't matter too much. Chrono. Oh, he's going to find Fada. Can't phase shift that for long as the stun comes through. Looking for the follow-up with the blast, the drain. They get the kill. Newbie takes the puck down, and the way to the two lies open. This is a... Crucial objective for establishing Roshan control, and I don't know that Cloud9 can fight it without that puck. They also don't have Blink of Sand King yet. Song is ready, but it seems Cloud9 are more content to just stall for now and try and do a bit of split pushing in their own. Yeah. To answer your question, as long as Pugna gets both of those items, uh, he should be fine. I don't think the order matters too much. Uh, and, and actually having the extra stats here for the pushes, Pretty critical, so you get off a couple more blasts. Yeah, you get the plus 225 talent, and nobody is going on this Pugna, especially not with Frost Armor. He's actually very tanky. Yeah. So. Frost Armor and possibly double pipe, eventually. It's kind of like the strategy that we saw from LFY previously, where uh, they picked Lich, and then they just built BKBs, and it's like, well, you know, we already <laughs> what did, did, you do, yeah. did a Dragon Knight, right? So just Dragon Knight with Frost Armor. You don't really want to get physical damage heroes against him. Your nuke heroes can't do anything against the BKBs. Like, this double pipe is kind of the same. Idea. Yeah. Newbie are going for the invincible to all damage strategy. But obviously not at that point yet. That's just the mindset with these items. Basically, it's sure Cloud9 can't really do anything. Have you noticed the way that uh, Pi has been using his ultimate? He's basically been using it every time off cooldown to give Eternal Envy vision. He's doing some next level riding. He's spotted right now. Oh, speaking of which. He's a song. Hey, get the hell out. how you doing? They're going to catch him out See? here. Blast coming through. He gets up the song, but the ward zapping him. Carapace was attempted there by Kaka. But and they get off a kill. It. Top. So that might look like a very curious play. Scientists might have been baffled, but let's look at the result, right? He got four people's attention at next to the enemy tier two. They're able to pick off a kill simultaneously and force out Glyph and damage tier one top. That is true space creation for a Cloud9. All according to the plan for Chairman Mao. But now Song's like cooldown for two minutes. Yep. And Pipe is ready. So I imagine if you're newbie, looking for that next big objective. This might be a good time to go into the Roshan pit. If they have a Medallion of Courage, it does not seem like they do. And uh, so maybe just get the lanes pushed. But Cloud9 doing a very excellent job keeping the, the pressure up on all lanes. And this is where you go back to the top and say, you know, maybe having BLTs will, will be somewhat better for, for this phase of the game. Making sure that you don't get pressured in from the side. Yeah, keep the farm up, help de push some of these waves. And, and again, Zetsuso goes off pretty much on cooldown every single time, just vision. Scouts out a smoke gank. So they're not going to get surprised. A very different way of playing Zeus from what you're, you know, traditionally seeing. As the chaos machine. I mean, this is why the old Cloud9, back uh, when even when they had Bone Seven on the team, like picked the hero. It was purely for the vision, not yep. at all for the, the damage. But Fada could be in trouble here. Kaka trying to get in range, goes for the initial oh. hit, and then the stun follow up comes through. It's only a level two phase shift now. Locked down by the Chrono. Crucial pick. They <laughs> lob in the chain for us. No escape for Fada. Huge commitment. But hey, Zong's on cooldown still for a minute. So Chrono and the chain frost will be at least halfway up. But time that. Uh...
Blowing down Fada, who's the mid-game tempo controller, obviously very nice for Noopy. But more importantly, they need to take these towers. They and that do. Is, that is on the menu now. This tier two bottom about to fall. But look at top for here for Cloud9. They were able to do a little bit of riding themselves. They're not going to get the tower, but that's a TP back here from Newbie, delaying the, the further push. How are we doing on the, the Radiance? Oh my god, Jackie Mao is so far away. 2800 on Naga Siren. I, I was wondering if SCCC might get his Radiance at the same Before, time, yeah. but uh, he just bought another Reign of Health, so it looks like he's actually going back for a ban. Okay. Uh, it would have been pretty funny if the Bristle goes you know, pipe first and still manages to meet the timing on the Radiance of the... All right, so we've got a little room to breathe here for Cloud9, Lumi. Overall thoughts on the way the game's developing? Pretty much as expected. We, we, we know that Cloud9 is not going to win the laning phase. We know they're not going to win the mid game. Just depends on how many, how fast Jackie Mao can farm, whether he's going to get caught or not. And Cloud9 is counting on a couple of mistakes here from Newbie. They need, they need Newbie to be careless. They need the puck as well as the nice soccer to get one or two kills, stuff like that. And finally, Aoi has his Blink Dagger. Quite slow, but be expected with the amount of roaming and early help that the team needed and with the mm. five positions so much. It's gonna lay out the Zeus ult, maybe try to lull newbie, false sense of security. And that ults down, but darkness is about to fall. Yeah, Cloud9 popped the smoke. They want to actually see the positioning of the hero, see if they can actually poke in for a kill. I don't think that's the duo you want to go on, though. If you take Carapace and then the Chrono comes out, you are done for. They think twice about jumping mid, and now Roche is happening. Roche is up. This is where Naga can shine. Has the TP ready, has the Shrine TP too. Definitely could look to contest here, but they're going to go in without the Zeus ult, so some big damage missing. It's a slow Roche, as you mentioned. There is no medallion, but Bristle certainly has the sustain to take it. it might take him a while, but he's going to force out the Pi TP. Okay. And now with Pi back at the well, still no Zeus ult for 45. This could be the time to just commit, newbie. Smoked up, and Milking to make their move. They're going to find Pot on the high ground, gets caught, sleeping with his pants down and punished by newbie. Was not prepared at all for that maneuver. They just came right at him. I think they just have to give up the Roche. A they, scan. They then scan and they find MSS. They could get more. Oh, Roche is dropping low. Naga still not making that TP. They're going to concede it. Maybe MSS oh. could steal it with his flying. He flies over. The fly ends. That is going to be it for the Roche. No, you say that, but Ali wants to blink into the pit. No! Not the blink you said before. <laughs> Chorus of Frogs marks the successful takedown of the road. Pretty. Uh, Newbie, you're gonna have some time here. What are the next steps for Newbie? They got their Roche, they took the tier twos. There's only one remaining top, Lumi. They've built their core items. Is there any sort of timer in your mind? Is there any urgency? Uh, are there certain things they're waiting on? Or are they content just to take this one? I definitely think that there is some urgency. You don't. Because once the Radiance comes online, the game start, starts to get slightly harder. MV is able to cut and farm much, much faster. MSS, no Chrono here, so he should be fine. God, that damage is yeah. dirty. <laughs> but I, I think the objective for Newbie here in the next five minutes is to push out the side waves and use that Aegis in some predict productive manner by pushing high ground. Damage tier three, start blasting it. But it's, it's hard. Look at what Naga's doing. This is where, again, the, the Pugna BLT is super, super useful. And he's going to go right back for it. Everyone on Newbie just feels so unkillable right now. Like, at least as far as the cores go. You've got a Pugna with 1,500 health and ages. You definitely don't want to go on him first. The Void has the, the hood, and it's actually made a big difference where he just doesn't seem that burstable. Nyx can be Carapace or Yules. If you jump him in, Bristle, obviously, is a tank. So. Like, basically, Lich is the only easy kill, relatively speaking. I I just wonder where Cloud9 find that jump, and you can see they're hoping for one. They've got three descending on KP in the top lane. They get the sounds off, they're going to drop the Void, and now try to commit forward. Owie gets him with the Burrow, but he might just time walk it all up. They can't kill him. KP survives, and meanwhile, the team is storming down mid. No epicenter for the high ground defense. No Zeus ult available either. 
It might be slow, but it's certainly steady. And with those Pugna Aether Lens blasts laid into this tower, it begins to melt. Cloud9, this may have been a huge error. Zubi are just going to take this tower down, almost finish it for free. And they'll still have time potentially to, after the glyph ends, go for the Rex. They can't focus on Mugi either because he's got the Aegis. So this is, this is tough. That's the thing is, you know, Nubi are- Oh, Envy's gonna get caught. Spike him. Be disastrous for Envy. They're just waiting for the setup. The team's marching into position. They've got Mugi ready for the damage. They just need the Void to come in for the lockdown. Tarapis comes through. They're gonna stun him, control him, taser him down. The damage is out of this world. They get the kill again. So Envy's dealt with. The tier three is now been laid waste to in the middle lane. Newbie are up 9,000 gold at 23 minutes. Yep. Against the lineup that you called greedy. A lineup that needs to spend a lot of time farming. A lineup that needs a lot of items. They have nothing right now. I mean, this game looks so newbie favored, but at the same time, the sense of urgency is there. They know that they need to finish the game fast because you drag the game out long against the a Naga. Things could be ugly. Fata, nice face dodge. Blink out. He's an escape by Fada, but that's Triple C moving into position. He's almost got his relic. MSS flapping up to the high ground. All stalling tactics like Cloud9 just trying to be cute, trying to be very annoying and just prevent Newbie from grouping up. But courtesy of this Aghanim Scepter of Mugi, he can just instantly deal with those illusions that come near his team. Now giving the Zeus the pain train, <laughs> the mana burn to Krep combo spells doom for the little man. And wait, wait, wait. Why is backdoor protection not up? The creep, there's no creeps, right? Uh, they were there. They were they, they okay, were there they're songing? Are, are they trying to okay, song to kill the ward? They have epicenter, but Aoi's not in position here. He's going to try to rev it up. A bit too late, though. S-Triple-C has the pipe ready, pops it, keeps the team alive. The coil committed. Kaka gets up. The carapace, now the chain frost is bouncing. Stun comes through. Three are dead. Song's been blown. Chrono as well, looking for the Night Sucker. They'll bring him down, too. Cloud9 are crumbling, and newbie surge forward onto the melee, but now backdoor protection is active. But the creep wave is coming Saving back the in. day for now. The creep waves are coming in, so... The... Is this just game? Uh, yeah, pretty sure this <laughs> is just tech <laughs> base. I mean, that was a questionable engagement. Maybe Cloud9 felt like they had to engage there because, you know, the, the backdoor protection wasn't up and... They just I, can't let Moogie just keep blasting like that. I mean, you you called it early in the uh, at the end of the draft, Lumi, I mean, at the beginning of the game. It's a pretty greedy lineup, and in fact, Noopy, they recognize that. They lane it properly, they itemize correctly to apply pressure, to poke at the weak points. To, they lane very well to just limit Envy's farm, and with Envy not being farmed, there's just no ability to stall. It feels like checkmate, it feels like Noopy and Cloud9 figured out as soon as the draft ended. Yeah. I don't feel like there are any like big individual misplays this game. It's not like you know someone played really poorly on Cloud9. Just, I don't think Cloud9 could actually beat Newbie when they played correctly with this draft. I agree. Uh, I think they needed Newbie to misjudge in terms of like how quickly Envy's farming or yeah. Like you can point at a few small things like they didn't really get the best song, epicenter, coil combo. Like the, of course the execution wasn't perfect, but it, it wasn't you know, so awful that it's like, oh, well, if they learned, if they fought properly, they could have done something different. So, well, not entirely over yet. They're now down two lanes of racks, and have to imagine with the next stage of Snoopy, Jugular, and the Mega Creeps. Fata's gonna try his best to keep this lane shoved in as much as he possibly can, and uh, Creep Cut, once the Creep Wave makes it past him, it's gonna make it annoying for his enemy, but not sure how much he could do beyond Annoyance. Aoi on a deep 40 mission here. Could get punished though. Kaka is going to set it up. Now they drop in with KP. They get the Decrepify. They give him the yeah. sucky sucky. And now he's on the run. Kaka Wait. looking to hound him, finish him off. KP also on the chase. Space created, dude. Yeah, it's a lot of space. KP says, too much for my liking. Chrono for you, sir. I mean, it's the kill, but an expensive one. Look that. at Fata, though. He's hitting your tier three, right? Easy. <laughs> His face created. Easy. Yeah, those BOTs for the Pugna, uh, definitely in order now. I think Mugi's recognizing that they need that extra mobility for him just to ensure that they can cut down on these shenanigans and try to end the game soon. Meanwhile, the real Naga Siren, uh, SC Illusion in the mid lane, pushing it into the base. 
Alright. That thing is a lot scarier than the knock. <laughs> <laughs> lot, lot tankier. And now building towards a heart. So already has the one vitality booster up. More to follow. Lacking the creep wave, but... You know, honestly, they might want to just start escorting the waves out to the tower just to ensure there's no cutting. Seems Cloud9 are not going to go for that any longer, though. They are all clustered in the base, ready for the death push. This is the last defense, and looking really. to take that fight outside the base. They smoke up. They have the vision. They have an idea, an inkblade of Warnubia, some vision on Mugi. They could set up here with the song. Is that how they want to start the fight? Fada's revealed. He tries to bait around the wave, orbing back the team there. But now newbie reveal and see most, if not all. They move in with the bristle quickly, coating him in sticky, nasty goo. And now MSS dropping low, brought down by the Pugna, finished off before the fight even really begins. Cloud9 hesitate, now they song, but they're all spread. It's not a good opening for Envy. He just uses this time to get back towards the base, protect this team from the angry Bristleback who charges forward, looking for AOI 2000. Going up Envy, Naga, as well as the Scorpion, all likely to die. Envy, your song ends now. It's just the fat lady who's going to be singing as Cloud9 get absolutely steamrolled in game one. Base and shambles, they'll buy back, but really, Lumi, it's all over. Yeah, I think to me, this game is. Some people debate how much of the draft matters, depending on what game, how much does execution matter. I think I, this is like 80-20, I would say. Yeah, something At like that. 90-10 like even. It's yeah. just... Jeez. I mean, that happens, right? You just have a bad draft, you get outdrafted. Um, now, it is a very long group stage. You know, two groups of nine teams, so you get, what, a total of 16 games, uh, eight best of twos against all your opponents. Cloud Knights start the day 0-3. Oh, oh. I just hurt yourself twice. You Dota 2, my bad together for the people. But guys, thank you for joining us. That is a wrap on game one. If Cloud9 looking a bit flustered, perhaps, <laughs> trying to regroup. I mean, obviously, this isn't just one game for them. It's also coming off the OG series. I feel like it was too greedy of a draft. I think Newbie know how to punish. I think against some teams, maybe you can get away with that. But Newbie, they like to play that mid game. Like, that's really where they want to be applying pressure anyway. So I think that plays a little bit too much into their hands and Cloud9 are going to just if they win. Yeah, Cloud9 is a team that has relatively different style. Their hero pool is very limited. Um, in fact, in the qualifier, they played the smallest hero pool out of every other qualifier team. Really? So this is a team that you could kind of predict and, and know what they're about to draft. However, this is a draft that I didn't expect Cloud9 to be doing coming in. I, I felt like they tried to throw a curveball and it kind of bounced off the floor and into their own face. Just kind of didn't work out. Yeah, they almost but. bounced Envy out of his seat by the looks of things. <laughs> He's firmly in his seat right now. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs>